Hey there, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to convert between octal and hexadecimal. So for the first example I'm going from octal to hex. And the number I'm using is 15.5. Now there are different ways that you can do this, but the way that I find easiest is to go from octal to binary and then go from binary to hex. Okay, so to do that, I start at the decimal place and I like to separate the digits because it just keeps it tidier and it's easier to work with. So 551. Five, and then beneath this I just write a series of twos and then I raise them to a power. So beneath each group, each digit, I'll write three twos. And then I raise them to a power. So 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2. And I repeat that for each group. So 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. Now if I just work out what these powers are, 2 to the power of 0 equals 1, 2 to the power of 1 equals 2, 2 to the power of 2 equals 4, and I'll keep my decimal there. Um, so again, it's just 1, 2, 4, 1, 2, 4. Okay, so the next step now is to say how many times does this bottom digit fit into the top digit? So 4 into 1 fits perfectly 0 times. And I bring one across, 2 into 1. 0, carry it across again, 1 into 1 equals 1. Now I do the same for each group, so 4 into 5 fits once for the remainder of 1, 2 into 1 fits 0 times, bring it across, so 1 into 1 fits once. Keep my decimal, 4 into 5 fits once for the remainder of 1, 2 into 1 is 0, Bring run across, 1 into 1, if it's once. Okay, so this is the number in its binary form. And now I just need to take it from binary into hex. So to do that, I do this. Start at the decimal again. But if you look here, um, there are only three digits in each group and I need to make it now so that there's four digits in each group. So starting from the decimal point I work outwards so one zero one and I can add a zero on the end here and now working from the decimal outwards again I go one zero one and I can bring this one into this group and after that I just have zeros so I can just forget about them. Okay, so what I do now is again, I write a series of twos beneath each digit. Keep my decimal there. And I raise each two to a power. So starting at zero, working my way up. One, two, three. Zero, one, two, Three. And if I just work out what these powers will be, they will be 1, 2, 4, 8. 1, 2, 4, 8. Okay, so what I do now is I use multiplication. So you should know that anything multiplied by zero will equal zero. So I can just cross out these columns that start with zero. And what I do now is I just go one multiplied by two, that'll equal two, plus one multiplied by eight will equal eight. One times one equals one, plus one times four equals four, 
plus 1 times 8, that equals 8. And now I just sum up each group separately. So 8 plus 2 will give me 10. 8 plus 4 plus 1, it'll give me 13. Okay, so we're almost there, um, but the hexadecimal number system doesn't have 13 or 10 in it. So if you look here, the hex number system goes from 0 to 9, and then it goes A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, so 13 in hexadecimal will be D. So just write D there, keep my decimal, and now 10 in hexadecimal will be A. So just write the A there. And that's the final answer, but to just show now that that's in hexadecimal form, I just have to write a subscript 16. So that's just a little tiny 16 in the bottom corner. Cool. And that's the final answer. So for the last example, I'm going to show you how to go from hex back to octal. And I'm just going to use the same hex number that we just worked out. Okay, so the first step is to take these back to decimal. So D in hex equal 13. So just write my 13 out. Keep the decimal point. And A decimal equal 10. So, 10. Now I'll write out my series of 2's, uh, but I need 4 of them. So, 2, 2, 2, 2. Keep the decimal point, and again I'll just raise these 2's to a power starting at 0. Working my way up, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, Two, three. Now, if I just work out what these powers will be, they will be one, two, four, eight. One, two, four, eight. And we're using division again, so how many times will eight perfectly fit into thirteen? We'll fit once. The remainder of five. 4 into 5, 1, the remainder of 1, 2 into 1, 0, carry the 1 across, 1 into 1, fits once. And I do the same for the next group. So 8 into 10, 1, 2, 4 into 2, 0, 2, 2 into 2, 1, remainder of 0, 1 to 0, 0. Okay, so this is a binary answer here. And now I just need to take that and put that into octal. Okay, so now that I need to put this into octal, I need to separate the binary number into groups of only three digits. So I'll start from the inside I'll start from the decimal and work my way out. So I have one zero one. Now when you're working on the right side of the decimal place, in binary if you have a trailing zero, you can drop it and it won't change the value of your number. I could just cross that out. Okay, so now working from the decimal outwards again, I have 1, 0, 1, and now there's one left, so I say 1, and I still need this to be three digits. So when you're working on the left side of this small place, I can add two zeros, and it's not going to change the value of the number, so that's okay. Um, so what I do now is... I write out a series of twos again. 
for each group. And I raise them to a power, so 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. If I work out what these powers will be, they'll be 1, 2, 4, 1, 2, 4, 1, 2, 4. And now I use multiplication. So I can cross out the columns that have zeros on top because multiplication by zero will give you zero. Right, so now for each group, I just go top digit multiplied by the bottom digit. So one times one gives me one for that group. Now for the next group, I go one times four, that gives me four, plus one times one gives me one. Keep the decimal there. One times four gives me four, plus one times one gives me one. So if I sum each group separately, I get 1, I get 5.5. So this is now taking me back to the original number, which was 15.5. And this is now an octal form. So to show that, I write a subscript date at the bottom there. And that just shows you that this is an octal. Cool. And that's the final answer. And that's the end of this tutorial. Thanks for watching.